Hello, in this video, I'm gonna show you how you operate your Valiant Ecotech Pro combination boiler. I'll show you how to adjust your hot water temperature so you can make it hotter or cooler, and that might make your boiler more efficient. I'll also show you how to adjust your central heating to make that hotter or cooler, and that will definitely save you some energy if it's set correctly. I'm also going to show you how to turn comfort on and off. That's Valiant's preheat for the hot water. Now I find most people don't know what the comfort setting is. Now you may actually have this setting turned on without you knowing about it. Now I always recommend having a setting turned off. And of course in this video, I'm gonna show you how you go about turning it on and off, which again may make your boiler more efficient. If you've got the Valiant 24 hour time clock or the Valiant filters fitted on your boiler and you'd like to know more about them, then of course I made videos all about how you operate them and service them. And you can find those down in the description. Now we're gonna quickly whiz through my intro, then get straight on with that video. My name is Mark Ballard, and I've been a gas registered engineer for over 20 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video helpful in any way, then please give me some feedback by clicking on that thumbs up, and that will also help others to find the video. If you think this video is useful, then click on that subscribe, and if you wanna receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos, which will hopefully help you. And don't forget, check out my website where I've cast across all my videos and you can find links to all the products and parts that I recommend. Now this is the Valiant Ecotech Pro Combination Boiler. And it's a fairly straightforward boiler to operate. Now this boiler doesn't have a clock in it, but you may have an analog clock or the digital clock. Or you may have a separate programmer like this Honeywell T3R. You can find the links in the description below. On the front of the boiler, you have your digital display. And if you push any button, it will light the display up so you can see it a lot clearer. Quick note, you'll need to press the button to light the display up before we can make any changes. So we have a picture of a tap here and we have a picture of a radiator here. Also on the front, we have the temperature of the boiler and that's the temperature that the boiler is at now. There's a gauge on the side here and that shows you how much pressure is in the system. I call it a tank and you want that black level indicator roughly in the middle. So in between the two dotted lines. And I'll show you how we adjust that in just a minute or two. If we want to adjust the temperature of our hot water, we push the button underneath the hot water tap. And if we want to adjust the temperature of our central heating, we push the button underneath the radiator. And then to adjust those settings, we would use the plus or minus buttons to change the settings. To turn this boiler on and off, all we need to do is press this power button here and then we'll see the display go out. There we are, now the display is off and the boiler is off and you can't get hot water or central heating. Press the button again, power comes back on and the screen says loading. And then you'll hear the boiler go for a little startup process. Just a little note, make sure that all your hot taps are turned off when the boiler is starting up. Now to adjust the temperature of our hot water, we push the button directly underneath the hot water tap. And we can see on this boiler, the water temperature is set at 55 degrees. Now, if we wanna adjust that temperature, all we need to do is press the plus or minus buttons. Now, if I press the plus button, I can take this temperature right up to 65 degrees. And once I've got that temperature, I can then press the tick, which will then set that temperature. And then I can press the back arrow, which would take me back to the normal display. Now 65 degrees is really, really hot water. That's scalding. I'm not sure when you'd ever want to turn it up that high, but the option's there if you want to. Now you can also turn your temperature of hot water right down to a much lower setting, right down to 35 degrees. And your water will be coming out the tap just about warm. Then you press the tick button to set that, and then we can go back to our normal home screen. Now, when I go to customers' homes, I regularly find that the hot water has not been set or adjusted and the customer has no idea that they could adjust it. If you've not checked the temperature of your hot water, then it's a really good idea at the end of this video to go and check what the temperature is set at. Because there is absolutely no point in heating the hot water up to a high temperature just to cool it down at the tap with some cold water. You're just wasting gas, increasing your energy bill, adding extra wear to your boiler, adding to scale buildup on your plate heat exchanger, which may mean that that heat exchanger will need to be changed earlier than normal. And of course, adding to climate change. So what temperature should you be setting your hot water to? Well, 50 degrees seems to be a pretty good average temperature. But if you find this is still a little hot, then just adjust the temperature down a little bit more. 
Having said all that, there are a couple of occasions where you may want to have your hot water a little bit hotter. One reason is for your shower. If you have a mixer shower which runs off your hot and your cold water, then you may find if the water is not hot enough, when you turn your shower up, you can't get your shower as hot as you would like it. In that instance, you may need to have your hot water set a little higher. Now, most showers can be adjusted manually inside, but you would need the instructions to do this. Now, another reason you may want your hot water set a little higher is if you like having really hot baths and also topping your bath up with hot water. In that instance, you may also want your hot water set a little higher. Now, if we press the tap button again, you'll see that there is another option on the right hand side here. So if we push that one there, we go to the next screen where you can see it says COMF, which stands for comfort. And you can see it says off. When comfort is turned on, you'll have a large letter C in the main display. What comfort does is it keeps the boiler hot so that when you turn a hot tap on, it doesn't take very long for the hot water to come out of the tap. But this does mean the boiler will be firing up, keeping itself hot during the day and the night when you're not using it. Obviously, that will be using gas and adding wear to your boiler. A quick note, if your central heating is on, the hot water will come through just as if you had comfort turned on. To turn it on and off, we press the plus or the minus button. And then when we press it, you'll see the display will change to either on or off. We then need to save that setting by pressing the tick and now that is now saved. And when we go back, the C is now in the display, which stands for comfort. And you can see the C is flashing. That's because comfort has now activated and it's warming up the boiler. Now it'll run for about two minutes as it heats itself up. Now, depending on the location of your boiler will depend on how many times during the day and night the boiler is gonna fire up to keep itself hot. Now this function can be useful, like if your boiler is in a loft or in an outhouse, or maybe if you're on a water meter, so you'll use less water. But that also means you may use more gas. And I think it definitely adds more wear to the boiler. Now to turn comfort or preheat back off again, we press the tap button. We then press the top right hand button and then we press plus or minus to change it to off. And then we press the tick to confirm that setting. And then we go back again to the main display. And now you can see C has gone away, so comfort is turned off. So that covers how to set up your hot water temperature. Now to adjust our central heating temperature, we need to press the button underneath the radiator. Now this temperature doesn't adjust how hot your house gets, that's the job of your room thermostat, but how hot your radiators get, which in turn will affect how hot your house gets. So push that button and you can see the display says 65 degrees. That's the recommended optimum temperature for your central heating on a condensing boiler. Now these boilers do work more efficiently if they're set at a lower temperature. So you could try pressing the minus button and turning that temperature down a bit. Providing your house stays warm enough for you, then that's great. You can set it down as low as you can get it. The boiler will work more efficiently and save you some gas. But when winter comes, you may find your radiators just aren't hot enough and you need to just turn that temperature up to make your house a nice comfortable temperature. When we start going above 65 degrees, the boiler starts losing efficiency, but we could set this right up to 75 degrees and then your radiator will be really hot and a house will warm up really quickly. But like I said, that is a little less efficient. I find most modern boilers today have some kind of eco setting for the central heating and that temperature is at 65 degrees. So adjust that down to 65. Then don't forget to press the tick to save the new settings. Then press the back arrow to go back to the normal display. One last thing regarding the central heating temperature. If we take the temperature right down to 30 degrees and then we go one more step, it then says off. If we press the tick and then we go back again, we then get this symbol come up in the display and we can't get central heating until that symbol has gone from the display. And to do that, we go back into the radiator we then press the plus button to increase the temperature and then we can select whatever setting we want and then of course press the tick afterwards. Now let's take a look at the pressure gauge or the filling tank as I like to call it. If we press the radiator symbol it'll then change the bar and we press it again and then we get a more accurate reading of how much pressure is in our system. And you can see there it says 1.6 bar. Now the bar gauge on the side here shows you how much water is in your system. And you want to keep your boiler topped up 
to roughly in between the two dotted lines. Now when the pressure drops on your system down to 0.6 of a bar, the display will start flashing at you, warning you to top up your system. When it drops down to 0.4 of a bar, the boiler will turn off flashing the F22 fault and then you won't be able to get hot water or central heating until you top the boiler back up again. To top the system up, you would go underneath the boiler and look for your filling loop. Now this is usually a silver braided pipe with two valves on it. And what we need to do is to open up both the valves and let the water into the central heating system. And then check our pressure, which should be around about 1.5 bar. If you'd like to have a more detailed explanation of how to top your boiler up, then I made a separate video all about doing that. And of course you can find that in the cards above now or down in the description. Now, if you ever get a fault code come up in the display, now this is a F29 fault, which is the flame has gone out when the ball has been in operation. Now, the only way to remove a fault code is to press this button here. That's the reset button, apart from the F22 fault, which I've already covered. Now, I press the reset button and then the ball will restart and then it says loading. It goes through a little startup process, then it's ready to use. Now, if you do get a fault code that comes up on your boiler, it is perfectly safe to press that reset button and restart your boiler. You can take a look in your installation manual and that will show you what the fault code means. But if the fault code does keep coming back, then it indicates that you do have a fault with your boiler and then you want to call a gas registered engineer to come and take a look at your boiler. Because if you are continuously resetting your boiler, then you may actually be damaging your boiler. So get it checked out by a gas registered engineer. I left the link in the description below, which will take you to the gas registered engineers in the UK. So let's take a look at the boiler in action. So if I turn the central heating on, you'll need to do that from your room thermostat or your programmer. We'll then see the radiator symbol come up in the display. And then very shortly, we'll see a flame appear in the bottom left hand corner. And there we go, there's the flame. And then the radiator symbol starts flashing, telling us that the central heating is now on and heating up. And we'll see the temperature on the boiler start to rise as it pumps the water around the central heating system. If I turn the central heating off, the radiator and the flame will go out. If I turn a hot tap on, we'll then see a tap come up in the display. We'll see the flame come on, and then the temperature on the front of the boiler will start rising quickly. Turn the tap off, the tap goes away and the flame goes out. And then you'll hear the boiler run for a little while before it shuts down. Now, if you have your central heating on and then you turn your hot tap on, you'll then see the hot tap come on, start flashing and the radiator symbol will stop flashing and then the flame will come on, it'll start heating up your hot water and then when you turn your hot tap off again, it'll go back to the central heating. So whenever you're using your hot water, the central heating will not be being heated because the boiler only heats one thing at a time and the hot water always takes preference over the central heating. Just bear that in mind so that whenever someone's using the shower or the bath for a long time, the heating will not be on at that time. So a little careful planning might be needed if you want a hot house and have hot showers. Right, that's about it then. So I do hope my video has been helpful to you. If you want to watch my next video, then you can click on the link just here. And if you found my video helpful in any way, then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up. And like I said, that will help others to find your video. And if you enjoyed the video, then you can click on subscribe. And if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. And if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my Toolbox Fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos, which will hopefully help you. Bye for now, and I'll see you next time.